Welcome everyone, it's Unstoppable Stiletsi here with a Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition cast a game to do, and this time we got ourselves another one of those 2 vs 2 deathmatch games. This time we got some interesting civs to look at, we got a Swedish and Mexico team and a Russia and Ethiopia team. Civs we don't see a lot often, especially I would say the Ethiopians. So before we get started, let's check out the map real quick and see how that's going to affect combat. So this map here has some pretty significant geographical differences. Namely, you got these little choke points in the uh, cliff sides here that you can walk through, which means it's going to make it a lot easier to wall these off and make it really hard to push through. You know, it's going to be like a meat grinder trying to get through these things. But once you get out of that, you got some, uh, tr well, wait a second. It looks like actually the train posts are on these sides of the cliffs. So yeah, I was going to say you could grab some train posts on the way, but... Yeah, you're going to have to get through the meat grinder first on both sides before you can get your opponent's train post, it looks like. Also, you got some European natives on this map as well. The House of Fanar. Those uh, Antimos Prostigma natives. So, making lots of ebb zones probably today. Let's see how this match goes, shall we? Alright, so, um... Which to start with? Where to start? So, uh... On this side, we got ourselves the, uh... Swedes and the... Mexicans. Yeah, this should be a pretty interesting combination. Mexico has some pretty tough units, I think, for a deathmatch situation, you know. I feel like, in particular, the Soldado is a pretty tanky warrior that can do a lot of damage here. Also, of course, you got the Salta Teodore, which is a decent skirm. Chinanko Riders are probably pretty good as well. Oh, Mexico going for the forward fort. Very bold move. That's going to help out quite a bit. Also note how Russia, who is in the current view, is using mercantilism to get a bunch of shipments available. They're going to get Sevastopol to make their forts and blockhouses go up super quick. Also, both dueling and fencing school to instantly train their infantry right out, right off the bat. So that's going to be really useful. Another thing I didn't really note at the first is first thing of the match was the fact that this is really going to look like a one versus one and a one versus one at least for the initial part you know just because these players are so far spaced from each other it's going to be basically two one v ones going on simultaneously here now this is something annoying as the uh, Ethiopians the fact that Mexico can plop down their inspired flag boost up all their troops in that area making it even harder to try to push through this thing the one good thing they did, though, was being able to stop that fort construction. That should definitely help them out a bit. But the next thing they're going to have to do is make sure that they can actually press into the space. And get through the meat grinder, which is going to be this uh, cliffside here. Right now we see Mexico going heavy on the Vigilante of the Teodores. Massing up skirms. Javelin riders not being able to do much against those. The Neptunians are probably going to have a bit of barrel luck here. Oh, Chotel Warriors. Uh, that, that could go good or bad. I say bad because look at how carefully these Vigilantes are placed between the barracks. You know, these choke points are going to make it really hard for the uh, Chotels to connect. So yeah. What's going on over here though? I heard somebody potentially dying. Are they dying? The Swedes? Well, they got a lot of resources. It seems like they're starting with uh, mercenaries. So Jaegers, Black Riders, that's going to dish out a lot of damage and a lot of stats overall. So I think they're doing pretty well at the moment. And let's see if they can uh, push this out, because it seems like they have lost the uh, canyon. And we got the mortars plopped up on that cliffside there, ready to start showing at the town center. So. I don't really know where this is going to go from here, though, but we're going to have to see how this plays out. Right now, it seems like Russians are also putting down a lot of artillery trying to blast their way through these buildings. Are we going to see any sort of help from the uh, Mexicans, though, to bail them out if they run into trouble? I'm not too, not too sure at this moment, honestly. Right now, it just seems like this blockhouse here has been fought down, so this means infinite infantry as long as the Russians can support the resources for it. Right now we see Poro Chicks taking the front lines, 
trying to thrust their way through the Black Riders, which is difficult because they do have 40% pack armor. So they are able to actually withstand a lot of those thrusts from those halberds pretty easily. Then we have, of course, recruits coming in as the uh, main troop being used to plow into this uh, cliffside here and head towards the town center. But now we've seen that the Jaegers have been upgraded into the Zabalax Jaegers. Granted them a little bit more stats, the ability to stealth, and cutting off some of the uh, coin costs as well, so they'll be a little bit more affordable now. Sweden has a pretty good surplus of wood, so the fact that these Jaegers are only going to have like an 80 coin cost, which you can see here, is definitely going to make them more massive in the foreseeable future here. And what? Oh wow, the Gustavian Guard as well from the uh, Royal Decree technology. They should help out pretty good. At least in Halberd. And we also see Swedish Hussars making a move on through the horse artillery, connecting and taking out. They get the, oh, yep, taking out half of them, and I think the infantry guns should be able to take out the rest at this point. Oh, a Krishnik. Uh, wrong time to use them, I would say, because they're taking up a lot of the damage on the front line. Unless they can sort of curve on over here to the infantry gun. Uh, they seem to be connecting a little bit now, which is good. How's this going, though, this front here? So, it doesn't look like Mexico is in really good shape, either. I see these Sebastopols blasting their way through now. And Ethiopia setting up a perimeter where they have Javelin Riders to deal with the Shinaka Riders. And then they have a mass of Natanias as well as Levy Gunners to guard against really any infantry threat. And this seems to be working out pretty good at the moment because these vigilantes do not have a lot of space to really pull out forward. It's also certainly annoying that you got the House of Panara native zone right here to prevent the cab from going straight across. And given the Ethiopians an advantage to respond with a number of seconds whenever you try to make a move on. Pretty much making these Sebastopol pretty invincible at the moment. We'll see if that can change though, because once you get past this Fenar settlement, once you show up these initial buildings, then you're gonna see these Mexican units having a greater chance of being able to attack you. But we'll see how that goes. It does look like though Ethiopia is starving a bit on food right now, and they're probably gonna need to get some fields up. They could also start to eat some of their zebus if they really need to. Though I'm not sure if they're going to want to kill those because the influence uh, trickle rate from fattening them at the market is basically going to grant them more levy gunners. Yeah, and I think that's what we're probably going to... Also, why are you missing the 20 pop? What's up with this? Get two houses down, you could certainly begin like 20 more pop workers, javelin riders, or infantry. That's a solid 20 additional units you could be putting on the field. Well, one house has gone down, you just need another one, I feel like, and then you're gonna have a pretty good mass here to protect these Sebastopols. I like the whole, di the whole idea of keeping them in the back and just plowing forward. At the same time, though, we see the Russian ally of the... the uh, actually, the Swedish ally of the uh, Mexicans doing good here. Yeah. For a while, it seemed like the Russians were really crushing them pretty hard again through that area. But finally, the Swedes have managed to wall this off. And they're going to take that opportunity to go help their friend out, who isn't doing too well. Yeah, I think with the combined 400 pop army here, I think they will be able to drive the Ethiopians out. You know. Uh, the Ethiopians have enjoyed the advantage of being able to hold off a 200 pop army of Mexican infantry and cav, but once this other group... Eh, wait a second, they're going home! Why are they going home? Oh yeah, because the Russians still found a way to break through with some Cossacks, and now they have to worry about their front again. Oh, wow. Good, good, good work, though. They were able to use the, uh, heavy horse guns to take out the Sebastopols because it got too close. Yeah, you gotta make sure you keep some distance between those things, or else it's not gonna work out too good for you. Now it's gonna be time for Swedes to return to the battlefield against the Russians and try to clean them out, because now they're starting to break through their wall. And they're here with another line of artillery ready to blast the way forward. Looks like uh, Swedes have some grab bands to help protect, as well as their crossbowmen, Sabalax Jaegers, and some culverts to try to snipe down their camp over the world. Oh, 
Oh wow, look at the allied help here from the Charo Chinako. Completely shredding through the not so unstoppable Stiletsis now. Really good. Really good work. That was a good, quick uh, maneuver by the Mexicans to help their ally out, and it should give them a better shot at um, basically driving the Russians out for a while so that Mexico can focus on their opponent easier. Yeah, because remember, if any of these guys fall, you basically lose the game, right? It's really impossible to deal with a 400 pop army burst with just using 200 pop. It's not ideal. Of course, if I can micro, and even then, they just have to spam over to your toe, so... If any of these guys fall on their respective team, then their ally is really the sign for now, but pretty much can Yeah, definitely take advantage of these two. Take advantage of the House of Phenomenaids, the Death Zones, as well as the uh, Bowyard Cavalry. These are a pretty tanky unit you can use to go into the front lines with. Apparently they got a decent siege as well, but like the flyers against villains. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. So yeah, definitely use those. Now we see the opposite happening. Now we see the Swedes taking advantage of their superior firepower with the Savalak Jaegers crushing through the Russian infantry. I think once you get a solid mass of the Swedish infantry right in front of their blockhouses, that's when you start to see those kill counts really rack up like an MVP. And you start to see like 2,000, 3,000, 10,000 kills in a match. And now that, you know, they're right up against the blockhouse, this prevents the Russians from building the satisfactory mass needed to defend themselves. We do see Russians trying to maneuver with cavalry, actually sending Cossacks and the Prishniks here from the back to try to flank their opponent and force them to go home. But thankfully some Draban stayed home and they're going to be able to cut these down while the frontal assault goes on. See Ethiopia and the Mexicans exchanging blows again right around the trade route. Not a lot of advancement from either side, it looks like. Now, it seems like this front over here is going to be the one where we see a defeat potentially of the Russians. But it really depends on if they can hold the ground, get some buildings in there, and keep the assault going. Also depends on economy, because uh, this economy is pretty meager right now. Thankfully, a lot of the coin cost of those Jaegers is offset now that they're satellite Jaegers from the wood, so that should definitely help. How about economic cards? How many of those do you need? You see, you still have Royal Mint that you could get. Royal Mint, um, textile mill, cigar roller. Yeah, you definitely need to get some of these going, because once you do that, I feel like you can have like an endless spam of Jaegers. And then you can add some Black Briars in too if they go cause that. And then you should pretty much be all set, I think. Because I know from experience, whenever I'm dealing with the Russian head-on, I can usually go full Black Briar and Jaeger against them at sweet. There's really nothing they can do on their own. Certainly if they get help from allies, they can usually uh, defend it, but if it's just them, trying to use, you know, good old Strelet for crews, poor chips, nothing they can really do about that. Yeah, and this is why we see Ethiopia. Ethiopians driving in some uh, javelin riders to try to deal with some of the light cab on the front lines. But of course they're going to be deflected pretty quickly by the large skirmisher from the Swedes right now. So not a lot of help, really. And at the same time, you give Mexico a better opportunity, yeah, to construct that fort again that they were doing at the start of the game. We'll see if they can actually complete the fort this time, because... I recall from uh, the start of the match, that fort did not go up so well. Uh, now it basically got burned to the ground before it even went up. So we'll see if diverting all those forces over to the other front is going to be enough to let this fort complete. And if so, I feel like uh, Mexico has a real shot of plowing in now and, you know, experiencing the same success that the Swedes are on their front. Yeah. It seems like now that the uh, Swedes can actually afford as many Jaegers as they need, you know. They're maintaining their 200 or so pop army pretty easily with all those meat and armor stats and the Jaegers. And they're really rarely having to replace units, I see, I see here, which is really going to help them out quite a bit. I just see they queued up some uh, Black Riders, which should definitely help. Also, they're going to add beat guards in and see, hey, maybe I can blast some of these buildings on the side. 
Yep, Kremlin Kaza on this board. Definitely be careful with that board, because that's gonna make it a lot harder to push in once that thing goes up. But there's not a lot you can do, unfortunately, with Russians, when you're dealing with Russians, right? Because basically, remember, your, uh, line in, your, uh, recruits can actually construct the forts with the, uh, what's the card called? Let me see if they even got it. I think they got it. The, uh, yep, the Pajitor's Toy Soldiers. Yeah, pretty much those recruits will be able to construct as many forts as they need to defend this area. I see the Russian infantry just hanging out in the middle of their town centers right now. They're not even going out to meet the Swedes at all in open battle. It looks like, too, because of all that spam they've been doing constantly of burn through units, their resource count is, like, almost dead at this point. I wonder now, does that mean the Russians going to be out of this real soon? Potentially they could be. Potentially they could be. Oh, no, it looks like uh, back over here... The Russian the, uh, Ethiopians were able to destroy that Mexican fort again. Second time in a row. So now it's another drawdown here. And we'll see basically what can Ethiopia do to really... Well, this is interesting. They actually have quite a few resources right now. What does Mexico got? Uh, Mexico has quite a few resources as well, so these players down here are not really struggling a lot. It feels a lot more like a stalemate on this front, you know. Right now we see Ethiopia doing some of their Gascania Javelineers, as well as some Nathanias and Levy Gunners. They also produce some Culverins from their palace, as well as Sevastopols. It's going to be really hard for one of them to defeat each other. Right now, I... One possibility I see is Sweden breaking through on the Russian front and then coming down and attacking Ethiopia from two sides. Basically Sweden coming this way and then uh, Mexico coming this way and that being their demise. Yeah, I don't see unstoppable Stilexis being very unstoppable right now against, uh, you know, fully powered Ev zones and Zephalax Jaegers. Of which most of them are still alive, it looks like, you know? They're not really going down at all. The only sort of thing Russia has going for them at defending A position is this fort. They also brought in another fort wagon. They're probably going to put it maybe here. Or are they going to put it... I don't know. I mean, it seems like they're losing a lot of ground to really be putting forts down on. So maybe they're going to have to stick it maybe somewhere in the back to help the Ethiopians out. Who knows? We'll definitely see pretty soon where they decide to put that thing. Also, one more thing Sweden can use, too, is the Greek Revolution, big fun, from the uh, House of Fenar natives, to send in some of their um, sacred band infantry, which are basically a pretty solid uh, native musketeer that they can use. Yeah, that might be something they do to put the nail in the coffin for the uh, Russians, finally, who are really struggling right now. I mean, they're trying to make poor chicks to attack the cab, which is really not doing anything because that hand armor again of the Black Riders and they're basically forced into a retreat in the back. Oh wow! We see actually Mexico making a move on them as well. Are they gonna take out are they gonna take out the fort? They're taking out their settler line right now and I think that's fatality right now for Russia. Absolutely I mean I was not expecting to see Mexican cavalry making it all the way over here. And they're, yeah, they're going to take down that fort, too. They're going to wipe out the rest of their economy as well. I feel like having the stalemate down here with Ethiopia, you know, Ethiopia and uh, Mexico basically had Mexico saying, you know what, my ally's winning right now, why don't I, why don't I put the nail in the coffin for my opponent? I got enough time, too, if Ethiopia decides to strike on me, I probably got enough defenses at this point to uh, deal with that. And as it stands right now, the Ethiopian army really has no shot against the Swedish one that's just hanging out down here. While the Mexicans do all the raiding work up here. Yeah, this army of Gascanias and other units, really not enough to deal with Savalax Jaegers at all. Absolutely not. Play, playback stopped because of an out sync with the original game? The thing is, you know, even though the game just out of sync, we already sort of know who won that right away. 
I think it's pretty obvious to say that the Ethiopia and the Russian team basically died eventually there. 100% sure of that because, well, the fact that Mexico was able to drain all the Russian settlers down and their resource stockpile was pretty low tells me, yeah, that's definitely a Sweden and Mexico victory there. I wish we got to see the last moments of it and get to look at the post-game stuff, but, uh, you know, things happen. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that cast of game. Definitely stick by for more of them than I'm going to be doing, you know. So definitely check out for those. If you enjoy any cast of games in any AoE game as well, like, you know, AoE 2, Age of Mythology, you want me to do, definitely do those as well. Send those my way. So, see you next time on whatever cast of game I do. Signing off now.